Caswell's unique plug and plate brush plating system, a simple way to electroplate small items. The systems can be purchased as a workshop shown here or as individual kits. Each plating system uses a wand to apply the plating. The wands will vary depending on the plate being applied. Nickel uses a stainless wand. Copper uses a copper wand. Copy chrome uses a stainless wand. Silver uses a stainless wand. Gold uses a stainless wand. And brass uses a brass wand. To prepare the wand, first make sure it's clean and if there's a lot of oxide on it, rub it lightly with some steel wool or sandpaper. Wrap the bandage loosely around the flat end of the wand, somewhat like bandaging with the tip of your finger. You need to ensure that no metal is showing because if any part of the metal touches the part you are plating, you will create a dead short and burn the part. Tie the bandage end off using a half hitch knot and cut off the excess. If the bandage is wrapped too tightly, the plating solution may not soak in. When this happens, the electric current cannot flow from the wand through the bandage and to the part. A tip to help this problem is to soak the bandage in water and then apply it to the wand. The plating solution will permeate through much faster. Here you can see how the blue solution hasn't soaked in. There are two different AC adapters for plug and plate kits. The 1.7 volt unit is used for only silver plating. The 4.5 volt unit is used for all other kits. To give more flexibility, split the two wires apart. Place the red plug into the end of the wand. The plug should fit tightly to make a good electrical connection. If it is loose, pry open the strips to tighten the plug. Gold plating a quarter is a good item to practice on. Clean the coin with soft scrub, then apply the gold solution in a continuing rotary motion. Don't hold the wand in one position, this will burn the plate. You should replenish the gold by re-dipping the wand in the solution approximately every 30 seconds. On larger areas it's easy to see when the gold has been used up on the wand. Generally with gold plating, as long as you have a good even colour, you have enough. If you linger the gold will be plated heavier in that area and it will look darker. By continually going over these areas, they can be lightened. If the workpiece is going to be handled extensively, like a watch, you need to go over the same area several times to build up a thicker layer. If you have a small piece of gold or sterling silver, you can pry open the wand end and insert it, then apply the bandage. These softer metals will sacrifice through the solution, extending the solution life. Gold plating fine detail can be achieved by using the pen wands. These have three different types of nib. In this example we are just plating the face on the coin and then the entire bust. All the plating kits work best using a slow, continual action of the wand. Keep the wand moving and keep dipping it in the solution to replenish the metal. With copper, as seen here, the metal is being deposited from the wand and the solution. This will also apply to the brass kit. 
copper plating disc quarter uses the same slow moving brush strokes. Although the plating looks dull, this is normal and a light polish will bring it to a high shine. All plug and plate systems can also be used to do immersion plating. Here we are using nickel. Just place the wand in the solution to act as an anode and then place the part in two. You'll see a gentle bubbling action showing the part is plating. Two to five minutes is generally enough to obtain an acceptable thickness of plate. Plating is normally carried out with a ratio of current to surface area and of course this cannot be regulated using plug and plate. So a very small part may get burnt and a larger part may not get plated properly because the current output is constant. Although plug and plate immersion isn't as accurate as our larger kits, some excellent plating can be accomplished with a little practice. Silver plating uses a 1.7 volt adapter. It plates very quickly as you can see here. Initially you'll see a lot of black smut. This is normal. Keep plating, moving the wand more rapidly than with the other solutions and with a little firmer pressure. The black smut will usually disappear. If there still is some smut left when you've finished, then use some toothpaste to gently rub the silver. A final polish with a soft cloth will bring out its true colour. Silver tarnishes very readily, and to maintain its appearance it needs regular polishing. Because it is such a soft metal, the silver plate will wear away eventually. To further maintain the thickness, clean the part with silver plater or silver smith. This actually adds more silver as it removes tarnish. A simple way of removing silver tarnish is to place a few spoonfuls of baking soda into an aluminum tray with some warm water. Drop the part onto the tray and leave it to soak for 30 minutes. A chemical reaction will take place and the silver tarnish will be converted back into real silver, so no thickness of coating is lost. To further maintain the thickness, clean the part with silver plater. This actually adds more silver as it removes tarnish. You cannot plate over chrome. The chrome needs to be removed by using a reverse plate setup and plug and plate chrome stripper. The connections are reversed and a stainless wand is used. The chrome will come off and leave a brown yellow stain on the bandage. Wash this out and repeat the process until the bandage no longer goes brown. When the chrome is removed, the more yellow nickel plate underneath is exposed. It's very obvious if you compare the disc to the chrome plated tube. Here we are plating the exposed nickel with a gold plate. Rinse the part off first with some fresh water, preferably distilled. If you have not removed all the chrome, it will become very obvious at this point because the gold plate will not attach to the workpiece. Use fairly slow circular motions and dip the wand into the solution on a regular basis to refresh it. As soon as the gold has a good even colour you can stop plating unless the part is going to be handled frequently. Then you need to go over it a second time. By spraying the gold with VHT clear lacquer you can provide a tough, abrasion resistant protective coating which will dramatically improve the gold's wear capabilities.